In this example, we'll do another Newton's type of uh, problem, dealing with Newton's laws. Here we have two blocks. One of the masses is 1.2 kilograms. The other one is 0 0.6 kilograms. They're shown below on a floor. They're being pushed across that floor by a force that's 300 Newtons. So F is 300 Newtons. And mass A, I'm going to call it, is 1.2 kilograms. Mass B, 0 0.6 kilograms. It says that the coefficient of friction between each block and the floor is 0 0.3. U is 0 0.30. What is the acceleration of the blocks? In part B, what is the force that the 0 0.6 kilogram block applies to 1.2 kilogram? I'm going to do it the more difficult way, which is to break the individual blocks up, apply Newton's laws to each one of their free body diagrams, and solve the algebra. But if I was really trying to do this very quickly, and I understood the laws really well, I could treat this as a single block here of 1.8 kilograms of mass. And one of the advantages of that is that it would eliminate the interaction between the blocks themselves. And this would simplify the calculations, enable me to get to the final answer very quickly. However, it would not enable me to answer the second part when it wants to know how the force, the six kilogram block, this one, applies back here. Of course, by the third law, the force that this block applies on that block is exactly equal in magnitude and of the same type as the force applied by this block upon the 0 0.6 kilogram block, just in the opposite direction. So to do that, we really do need the individual free body diagrams. So let me show you how you work this problem. Let's start by drawing two isolated bodies one for each free body. I'm going to then use 1F to find all the forces, starting with W. So weight, WA, over here, WB. Normal forces, well there's a surface of contact on both of these, so there's some normal forces there. Call this N1, maybe call this N2. However, there's another normal force. There's a surface of contact right here. This one will apply a force by the 0.6 kilogram block in this direction. I'll call that N3. But by the third law, if the 0.6 kilogram block applies a force of some type, a normal force in this case, upon the 1.2 kilogram block, then the 1.2 kilogram block must apply a normal force that is of the same magnitude, N3, in the opposite direction on the 0.6 kilogram block. So right here, there's got to be an arrow going this way. And it has to have the same magnitude, N3. Now, Weight applied, applied, yeah, there was an applied force. The F force is an applied force. I'm going to change its color, just make it easier to see. And it's pushing this away. And it's only applied at the 1.2 kilogram block. It's not applied at this point. It's applied right here. T, there are no tensions, there are no strings. F, yes, there's friction. As this block attempts to move this away, on the bottom there should be a friction force opposing that motion, call that F1. Likewise, as this block is moving, the floor should apply a friction force opposing that motion, F2. Their third law forces are on the table. So this force and this are not going to be the same magnitude in general. Now, last but not least, we need some coordinate systems. So for both, we'll put our coordinate axis just like this. All right, now we need to just take these blocks and read Newton's laws. Sum of the forces in X is equal to mass of A times acceleration in X. 
the sum of the forces in Y off the first free body diagram is the mass of A times the acceleration in Y. Okay, well, there is no acceleration in Y for this block, so that's zero. Reading this, the left hand side, I just read the diagram. I got a plus F. I got a minus N3. I got a minus F1. And that's got equal MAAX. Reading the Y part, I have a positive N1 and a minus WA. Over here, since it's sliding friction, I can replace this with mu times N1. The normal force here produces this friction force. For this equation, I have N1 is equal to MA times G. Okay. This gives me, substituting this in for the normal, F minus N3 minus mu MAG is equal to MAAX. This is equation one that we're going to want to use. Going up back up over here, let's deal at least the Y part of the second free body diagram. Sum of the Y's forces is MB, because that's the mass of the body in this diagram, times AY, but AY is zero. That's N2 minus WB is zero. So N2 is equal to MBG. Now we also need to work the X part. So down here, sum of the forces in X is MBAX. Maybe you can put it all on your paper in one place, but unfortunately I can't. Reading this diagram, I have N3 is positive. I have minus F2. And that's equal to MBAX. So this is N3 minus mu N2 so that's the normal force here because it's creating this friction. MB AX. Now I'm going to substitute this N2 in for here. And I get N3 minus mu MBG is MB AX. And this is equation number two. Now, the easy way to deal with equation one and two, because of the third law, this N3 should have a sign difference between equation one and equation two. It should have the same magnitude, be the same type, but have a different sign because it points in the opposite direction. So when the easiest way to eliminate N3, this force between the two objects, is simply to add these two equations together. Then the minus N3 cancels the positive N3. So we're going to do that. 1 plus equation 2. We get F minus N3 minus mu MAG. On the bottom we get plus N3 minus mu MBG. And on the other side we get MAAX and MBAX. The X is the same so I can factor them out. Notice that this cancels this. We get F minus mu MA plus MB times G is MA plus MB AX. I said earlier that I, because I've done a lot of these problems, could have jumped down to here. Why? It's the external forces that are important. If we look back at our block as a combined unit here, 
if I thought of these two, this, 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 and this as a combined unit, then the friction force here, there'd be a friction force, which would depend on mu and the normal. But the normal would be the force applied by the table opposing both the weight of this and the weight of that block. Well, that'd be the total mass, 1.8 kilograms times G, or MA plus MB times G. Well, that's exactly what this is, MA plus MBG. That's the weight of the whole block, a 1.8 kilogram block, times mu. And this is the force F. These are the external forces. The N does not show up. It falls out. And what's over here? The total mass. Now, that takes a lot of practice and a lot of knowing and a lot of fine points of understanding. It's the net external force in Newton's second law that's important, not just all forces. So when I'm solving a bridge, it's only the forces outside the bridge that can cause the bridge to change. Outside is whatever I define to be the particular free body. So if I want to take a part of the bridge, I can take that to be, and then other members of the bridge pushing on it are external, or I can take the whole bridge and consider that to be the thing. To find the acceleration now, you have F minus mu MA plus MB times G divided by MA plus MB. So AX is equal to and by the way, you might even want to simplify this. It's kind of neat if you do that. You can see this would be like the acceleration that the force would have if there was no friction. And then the frictional effect is minus mu g. Ax is equal to 300 newtons over 1.8 kilograms minus 0.3 times 9.8 meters per second squared. So this effect is about a 3 meter per second squared reduction in the total acceleration. And this is 300. Well, that's 3 times 0 0.6. It cancels 100 divided by 0 0.6. So this thing is going to be somewhere like about 160 something. Plug all that in and you get 164 meters per second squared. That solves the first part of this problem. In the next video, I'll solve the second part.